Tuesday, y'all. <laughs> How you doing? Thanks for coming and joining me. <laughs> um, nice to be with you. Feels like a quiet night. I mean. get to sit down with y'all for for an hour is nice and quiet but this feels nice Piper blazed through her last nap not napping and I got to sit on that couch for a while and let her suck on my finger and just hang with her and that was a real nice well, it was a nice way to start. <laughs> it was a nice lead up to our gathering tonight. Um, <laughs> hope y'all are doing well. We're playing leftovers tonight. Last time we gathered, y'all had a whole lot of good requests, and I thought, yep. Frozen winter, and I'm 
I'm just scraping bed. Jordan don't say it's my last chance to fade. I'm a worn apparition. Your eyes will turn away. Blind craft of blood. Steps I walk each day. Oh, Jim, my daughter, walk on from play. She Chance to fade. I'm a worn apparition. Your eyes will turn away. Black after blood. Life on a cloud. My road to redemption. Steps I walk each day. Been a hard month of hustling for the little I make. One more street over, been done for the day. Cheers. We had a little snow this morning up here, man. Any of y'all had any snow yet? It's starting to feel like it. It's starting to feel like winter time's coming. That and the damn sun going down at like four o'clock in the afternoon.
God. And it's still gonna get darker. For like another month. I don't mind the snow. The dark's a little bit of a bummer. Um, I gotta wake up a little earlier, maybe. But you know, after a night of jumping up and down with my wife uh, as she feeds Piper, um, uh, every little hour of sleep counts. <laughs> now, some of you had some snow. All right. All right, Joanne skied in Vermont this summer. All right. <laughs> I don't mind the snow. I mind scraping the windshield is what I fucking mind. I don't like driving in blizzards, especially when I'm late for gig. These are the things that bum me out about snow, but it's pretty, especially up here on the coast of Maine, man. Oh. It was just so pretty. I'm gonna try and play another one. I forget who it was. They mentioned the resonator the other night and I really enjoyed playing it. This is, um, if you can, this is a hard instrument I mean, any guitar is pretty easy to play, right? But some guitars are easier to play than other guitars. And this guitar, this is such an old, banged up beater of a guitar. Um, and I love it, I love it so much. But, uh, but it's a little challenging to play and it probably needs to get worked on. I, uh, I asked uh, somebody to work on it at one point and they were like, yeah, no, lost cause. Uh, <laughs> My old buddy, Jim Moradian, who passed a couple years ago, uh, he actually first set this thing up for me and he put some electronics in it so I can play it out on the road. But once you start playing up higher on the neck, uh, it doesn't keep tune quite as well. And as you all know, I'm an artist that doesn't keep tune very well myself. <laughs> but if you can see, right, every guitar neck is shaped different, but this one, Let's see if I can put them next to each other. It doesn't really, you can't really appreciate it, I don't think. But this neck right here is about twice as thick as this neck over here. And, you know, it was just made in another era. And I'm, ah, man, I'm trying to figure it out. Cause like, I mean, look at this, this neck has been through, right? It's been through all of creation, right? And the hardware, the tuning pegs at the top. I mean, it's just a beautiful old instrument. It would probably play better if I put a new neck on this thing. A new neck and a new head, new uh, tuning pegs. And I kept this beautiful body as part of the guitar. It would probably play a little bit better. I haven't been able to bring myself to do it. Um, but one of the reasons and I told you all this when we were talking the other night. A lot of you ask why I don't bring it out on the road. Uh, uh, one of the reasons is that, you know, there's only just so many, so much room in our little itty bitty van that we drive around in, right? Uh, and maybe someday we'll be driving in, a, in, in more robust accommodations, but we'll see about that, right? But um, But the other problem is that when you have an instrument that doesn't, stay in tune super well it's hard to play right it gets more challenging when you play with other musicians who who they don't sound good when they're not in tune with their lead singer and guitarist right so um anyways i'm going to experiment with a song that jumps around the neck a little bit and we'll just see we'll see <laughs> Each 
sound an instrument. Take a lot to, to 
take away the things you've got in store. Would you cry?
Ok. Thanks for the claps. Thanks for the love. I'm getting hot in here. Yeah. I know it's a mess back there. And by back there, I mean back there. And you know, these days, you don't know if there's, there's probably a couple layers of, you know, Spit up and drool and all sorts of good things. <laughs> Mixed in. Nice leftovers. Nice leftovers. Um, got a cool update on, um, on, uh, the dysfunctional family gathering holiday tour um we have decided that for all of the shows that we're playing uh including our show in just a couple of weeks in Waldboro, maine um our little outlier happened in a couple of weeks before the rest of the tour starts but uh for all of our shows we're going to be raising money for uh for families of uh some of the victims in lewis the maine um the recent gun massacre there so um uh, feeling pretty proud of our Rally Sound team for organizing that. And uh, I'm looking forward to uh, doing a little good uh, throughout, uh, throughout, our little, throughout our little tour. Um, I'm looking forward to seeing our friends uh, in, uh, in Cersei and playing music with them. Uh, it's all coming up. And this Saturday... I got my first show back in action. I mean, it's one of our very first uh, Give Folk House concerts. Uh, and uh, and it's going to be in, I think, South Berwick, Maine. I couldn't remember this the other night. And I'm still not remembering it very well. Um, and I don't know. I should check right now. Because I have a feeling that our website will tell me if it's sold out. I feel like it was close to sold out and I don't want to be telling you about a show. Yeah, South Berwick, Maine. It says it is sold out. Shit. I'm sorry. I apologize. For you Mainers who want to come and hang, uh, you're going to have to come up to Walderboro. Uh, and, uh, and you'll get to see me and the bandies at the Waldo Theater. Um, uh, for those of you in Vermont... I'm sneaking away on the 15th of December uh, to uh, to do uh, to do a house concert there, to do a Get Folk show there. And that should be super fun and interesting because, uh, and I don't know if I've talked about this yet, but yeah, I'll remember in January, uh, this guy had a stroke. Um, and for those of you uh, that, uh, that, were not around during that little episode. Uh, it was something very small and uh, uh, a little scary, but not a big deal. And, you know, I fully recovered and all that good stuff, you know. Um, um, but uh, but I have a little hole in my heart that is what caused the stroke. And, uh, and on December 13th, I am driving down to Boston and, uh, and, uh, and they're going to patch up that there hole. So, um, so, uh, I'm, uh, I'm looking forward to just getting that done with. Uh, it is, uh, for these, uh, people that do this surgery, it is really not a big deal. So, uh, uh, not, uh, not, a not, nothing you all have to worry about on, uh, on my behalf. Uh, I'm just going to go and get it patched up. I'll be, uh, I'll be playing some radio appearances, uh, the next day and the day after in the morning. Um, uh, uh, and, uh, I'm going to stop by, uh, my friends at the, at, uh, the morning buzz on the morning of the 15th before I drive up to, uh, Vermont to play a little acoustic show. 
and yes, um, uh, yes, I'll be taking her slow and easy, um, so, uh, yes, December 13th, uh, December 13th, lucky 13th, that's what I'm talking about, uh, should we get back to your leftovers? I feel like we should. Um, uh, it's kind of cool. I have a, uh, I have been, uh, taking advantage of my, my, my little windows here at, at, at home. And I'm going to show you, I have a little recording set up here. Oh, there we go. Right here. And it, it's a kind of a mess, but, but, uh, uh, it is, uh, I've been, uh, I've been working on some of the, some of the new recordings and some of the stuff, uh, and, uh, sending, sending tracks back to Boston. Um, as you know, as, as we were waiting for the baby to come, I was in the studio a bunch. Uh, my bandies are going in and out of the studio and, uh, and tracking their parts. So, um, oh, thank you for all the for the prayers and the healing thoughts, uh, I appreciate it. Uh, you really, there are a lot of folks around the world these days that could use those thoughts and I don't feel like I'm one of them, but I appreciate, uh, how much y'all care about me and, uh, want me to be healthy and safe and all that good stuff. Uh, I promise you, I am taking very good care of, of myself these days and, uh, and uh, I'm healthy, I'm good, and uh, and you don't have to worry about me. Thank you, though. <laughs> um, okay. Where are... What happened to our leftovers? Ah, uh, here's my leftover list. Okay. Hmm. All right, I'm going to play just one more on this on this resonator because it's sounding nice to me. The ballads are sounding nice to me. You know, it's kind of like when I bought this thing, I was like, oh, I can play kind of some of the more kind of nasty songs on it. But these, these ballads, it just, they ring nice right now. I've walked the line, but you figured me out. 
playing uh i've been playing uh a mandolin a bunch you know uh for those of you who uh for those of you who uh have been coming out to shows a bunch you know i've been i, I bought what's called an octave mandolin right so it is like a viola or a cello as compared to a violin and an octave mandolin is just bigger and deeper. And uh, I've been having a lot of fun playing songs uh, with that instrument. We've been recording it. And so I found this other mandolin that I had got years ago. I just, you know, I, I, I bought it, you know, I bought it like used somewhere. I mean, it's really crappy. I mean, it looks kind of cool, right? Cause, and you can plug it in. But it, you know, I paid like a hundred dollars for it or something like that, right? But but uh, and it's got this way high sound, and it's a much different sound. Uh, well, I don't know why I p picked it up because none of your uh, leftovers, and I just told you I was gonna play the resonator. I don't know why I did that, but I have it, so I'm gonna play something. On it. Uh, but I've yet to play for you all on a regular sized mandolin. And for those of you that, uh, that have been hearing me on my other instrument, this one is so much higher, right? It's an octave higher, as a matter of fact. Um, but uh, but it's just a totally different feel. And so in the studio, I've been uh, I've been recording some of the mandolin songs that uh, like Reveille and uh, and um, uh, and I will ride. Uh, the bandies have been tracking; they're sounding good. Um, but I've been tracking was called an overdub uh, overdubs with this little mandolin uh meaning an overdub when you're in the studio is right you you record 
the band has recorded their parts and then if you're going if you're going back and adding parts you're doing overdubs kind of that's what that's what that means so anyways i've been i've been doing overdubs with this little high mandolin and i've been really uh i've been enjoying it i'm sure any mandolin player out there if you are watching this probably sounds like shit i couldn't tell one way or another it sounds cool to me and uh and i've just been having fun with it but um one of the songs that has totally surprised us is we went in to track a brand new song. We've only played it out a couple times. Uh, and uh, when I first wrote it and shared it with you gatherers, it was called uh, Luna Madre. And uh, and uh, when uh, when I played it for Poche, uh, he was, uh, you know, he thought about it, thought about it. And he, he was like, you know what, that should be called Mama Luna. Uh, and so, uh, uh, as the, as the Spanish speaker of the, of the group, uh, he had a, a whole lot of cred on that. And that's the only Spanish phrase in the whole song. But, uh, um, but, uh, anyways, I'm gonna, I'm gonna play it for you uh, on this little guy. <laughs> Mama Luna, hear me calling Many roads have come and roam My hands are tired, my feet are stalling I am weary, take me home The and see the stars we share From a poverty not alone started recording that as a band and we have been loving the recording like it is it doesn't happen super super often like oftentimes and I'll be honest with you I'm just gonna be honest with you right like like we play uh, uh, um, another mandolin song called Revelate thanks for all the claps I'm glad you all like that song. I can't wait for you to hear the recording. I'm excited about it. I'm like a little bit giddy about it. Um, the, and I wrote the song and I never thought, I didn't think it was like a T 
tier one song. I mean, I write a lot of songs, and uh, a lot of them ain't tier one songs. Um, right? And I don't know what I even fucking mean by a tier one song, right? But there are some songs that are obviously more popular than other songs there, and that doesn't necessarily make a song better or worse, right? But there are some songs that I feel like as a songwriter are written better than others. Um, uh, and then there are sometimes, like... A song just bubbles out and it just feels like a little something, right? And I finish the song and it feels good and I say to myself, well, maybe maybe someday another, I'll play that song out or something. I'm not sure, you know? And that was what this song felt like. And then so we went into the studio and, and, and it just, the song just came came alive when we were playing it in the studio. It was so much fun. Like, it's so much fun to listen to. Uh, Kareen is playing a penny whistle. It's really cool. Um, uh, but like, a lot of our songs, ironically, right? A song like Revelate, another mandolin song that we play out all the time. And uh, you all have voiced very strong opinions that, that whatever happens on this next album with our 27 contenders revelate should almost definitely be on the next album right there were some some songs there were i think if if i am if i have my fingers on the pulse and many of you gatherers and for those of you who weren't here for a number of weeks i was playing all of these songs that are contenders for the next Adam as a group album, or the next couple Adam as a group albums. There was like twenty seven of them, or something like that. And uh, and uh, and I would take feedback from you gatherers. I mean, you all have been a huge source of uh, of our creative direction as a band, and uh, and I love that. I feel like that's that's us making music together, right? And that's that's what it should be. That's. That's what inspires me about playing music live as opposed to playing by myself, right? There is something that happens, right? The listener gives something to the song. And uh, and so, there, you know, there were a handful of songs like Revelate and Pink Champagne and Pocket Full of Seashells that I felt like, like all of y'all that were vocal were... Like, those songs really, really, absolutely have to be on the album. And, you know, and they're songs that we've been playing playing out. I haven't played Pocket Full of Seashells with the band uh, 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 before, but they've been doing some really cool, creative things um, with the arrangement, and that's been cool. But a song like Revelate, which is one of our favorite songs to play out, I, I'm just... I'm just having trouble with in the studio. I don't know what it is. And, you know, and it's hard because, like, you know, I could play you what we have so far. I could play you a piece of the recording, and you probably would all be really excited about it, right? Like, and it sounds good, and if somebody listens to it, I think it'll sound good. But, like, there's a little voice in my head, and it is often loud when I'm in the studio. It's one of the reasons why I really have difficulties in the studio, that it's just saying... Adam, you are not doing justice to this song the way that it needs to be done, right? And it might just be in my head, but I don't know. But every once in a while, right, there is a session like the one we had with Mama Luna where it was like, oh, this is just working and it's so much fun and I love it. It makes me love the song that much more. So anyways, if you're interested some insight into our studio trials and tribulations these days. <laughs> All right. I'm going to play two more songs. I did say I was going to play another Resonator song. Um, I'm going to play another one of your... Uh, uh, I'm going to play another one of your um, leftovers. And... Uh, and... Uh, and then we'll toast each other before the end of the night. Um... Somebody says, record a live album. We do record a lot of live albums. I mean, we've released four live albums. And they're fun, right? And we can keep recording. 
and releasing live albums, but there is something. I'm sure we'll keep recording and releasing live albums, right? But there. And that's and that's great. I'm trying to find my words. Um, uh, I always talk about a song being uh, being a living art form, and so it's always changing. When you play it live, there's something that happens right between the band and the, and the listeners, and uh, and. And as magical, and some of it translates into a recording, but there's also, right, the song itself. As a songwriter, I want to service this. I've created this, this little piece of art, right? And I want, I want it, to, I want it to have a version that feels like a finished painting. I want it to be in a nice frame, and I want the colors to pop off the canvas the way that they should, the way that I. The way that it feels to me when I sing the lyrics. And that is so, so difficult for me in the studio. I can't explain it more than that. But I have come to this revelation during my paternity days. Because I've had time in the house, not on the road, not playing, but thinking about the music. And I have decided that, like, you know what? Adam, you just got to fucking suck it up and get better at at the studio stuff you just gotta do it you just gotta get better at it and you know and it might just be because I get frustrated easily and I don't feel like I'm I've got a great barometer for studio work just get better toughen up I could be digging ditches but I'm not I'm playing music and I got nothing to complain about and if there are things that I'm not great at okay Get better. Suck it up. That was my revelation. Oh, right, oh, right. June the 
Let us drink to the wind at our backs. May it always blow steady wherever you roam. May it turn when you're ready to carry you. Oh, 
garden we see Here's to our hearts and the air that we breathe Here's to ending good company Here's to the future, here's to the past Let us drink on down slow, let us drink on down fast Let us drink on as if these night is a Here's to the drink that we share, yeah. Here's to the drink that we share. Mm. This felt like a nice one tonight. They always feel like nice ones. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm breaking out the bottle for a last toast to y'all. Cheers. Uh, I got some crazy news. I got a couple crazy news items for you. I should have talked about it earlier. I don't know if I'm allowed to talk about some of the stuff yet. I don't know if I'm allowed to talk about any of it yet. Uh, but I'm going to talk about it because I got a big mouth. It looks like we are going to be invited back onto the train cruise in 2025. Um, it's called Sail Across the Sun. I'm super excited about it. Um, uh, we had such an amazing time. It inspired us doing our own cruise this year. The question is, in 2025, do we do our own cruise and trains cruise? I don't know. I want to. I want to. I don't know. We'll have to figure it all out. We'll figure it out together, though. The other great news, and uh, uh, and, and the other great news uh, is that, uh, 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 and again, nothing, nothing is confirmed, right? Poche was just down in Bolivia. Uh, we tuned in to his badass, amazing concert. Some of y'all were with me watching him. What a talented dude, huh? It's like, you just see like a little piece of the talent when he plays with the Adam as a group, but there are many different facets to that guy. And, uh, and they're all pretty amazing. Um, but, uh, he was down there hosting his own concert for Senda Verde. He's working at Senda Verde. Uh, he was also, it turns out, um, he was talking to the, uh, uh, the, I don't know whether it's the Bolivian embassy or the American embassy in Bolivia, but, uh, it's looking likely that, uh, that we might, we might get a grant to bring the Adam Ezra group down to Bolivia to play some shows. Uh, it will probably happen at some time in 2024. Um, I don't know what it's going to entail, but it's going to involve spending uh, some time at Santa Verde. You bet your sweet bippy. Uh, hanging out uh, with the animals and hopefully doing a little good down there uh, while we're there. Um, uh, if we are going down, we will figure out a way uh, to uh, to make it possible for you all to join us somehow. Um, but, uh, but uh, you know, it's a big journey, South America. There's a lot of shit to do. There's a lot of, that's what I'm trying to say. There's a lot of shit to do. You people have to clear all your calendars, um, is my point. So, um, so anyways, that's the, uh, that's the big news. Those, those are the big newses. Those are the big newses for us. Um, uh, nothing is, nothing's set in stone yet. And nothing's announced. You know, you can quietly discuss it amongst yourselves. Of course, 
but um, but they are certainly uh, so many exciting things to look forward to. And before any of that happens, I get to hang out with y'all at the winter gathering in a couple of weeks, and uh, I can't wait for that. So, so feeling lucky to be a part of this community. God, it deserves another drink, doesn't it? <coughs> Cheers. Mm -hmm. I am going to uh, I'm going to sign off and I'm going to do a little recording before I pass out uh, tonight but um, thank you for continuing to uh, inspire me in all sorts of small little ways and some big ways too <laughs> please stay safe keep on looking out for one another and I'll see you soon <laughs>